Hello my friends, welcome back. My name is Lucas. This is the Lucas Yarns YouTube channel. I hope you're having a great week. It has been kind of a chaotic week, uh, as you can see by this video being a little bit late. I'm hoping I can still get it up on Saturday. Today is Saturday, February 24th, 2024. Uh, we are almost in March. Can you believe it? I know I can't because, oh my goodness, it is almost March. Anyway, so... Right off the bat, there's going to be very little crafting talked about this week because all of my crafting energy went this week into the blanket squares for the Roll the Dice blanket. You will see that update video on Wednesday of next week. Um, all the squares are done as of today. I'm hoping I can squeeze in a little bit of something else <laughs> between, between now and uh, next week's video. But this week just went completely out of, out of my hands. Um, for a lot of different reasons, some of which I, I won't get into here, uh, but it was a four-day work week. Those are usually pretty brutal for for me and what I do in, in my profession. Some of my co-workers now watch the, the channel, so hello if you're there. I see you. <laughs> uh, but um, four-day weeks are pretty brutal in, in the, the profession that I have, so this week is a little bit crazy. I think I worked close to 60 hours over the four days, uh, and I have a little bit I need to do tomorrow, tomorrow being Sunday. Um, but anyway, I digress. Not a lot of crafting is going to be talked about this week. And I did announce in uh, my Facebook group earlier today when I said, hey, the, the video is going to be late. Um, I did say that I was going to be knitting on my hitchhiker's uh, shawl, the one uh, being made out of the, the yellow gradient zebra yarn from these creative hands. Um, that I can't actually do because I left the project bag in a different place. Um, I will go get it at some point uh, tomorrow, but um, yeah, can't even do that. So I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit all over the place today. But we, not that's not saying we don't have yarn content this week because we absolutely do. I have a couple of purchases. I have a couple of pieces of Happy Mail. And then I'm, we're gonna we're gonna start the Q and A video today as well. Um, we might finish it. We'll see. We'll see how how far we get through it. Uh, so why don't we dive in? <laughs> why don't we dive in? So uh, purchases. Um, lovely, amazing. As I rearrange my footrest on the floor, I apologize. Uh, lovely, amazing. Uh, TL Yarn Crafts. Uh, did a review of a Tunisian crochet hook set that was found on AliExpress. Now, just like Timu, just like Wish, just like some of those, you know, questionable retailers, uh, you're going to have your feelings um, based on your own experiences, uh, based on your own whatevers, right? Um, oh, you know what? I should I should mention this shirt first. It's a shirt that I don't wear often because it's not the right size, and I feel a little weird about it. But it's got a saying on it that says, I won't quit, but I will swear the whole time, because <laughs> that's just how this week has been. Anyway, um, so Teal Yarn Crafts, I will link the video in the description. Uh, she uh, reviewed a Tunisian crochet hook set that she was either found or somebody sent to her uh, a link on AliExpress. I watched the review, and I immediately purchased this set. And it came in over the week. Um, so I thought I would show it for you today. Comes in this case. Now, I absolutely hate this case. This case is garbage. Um, but, but it's okay. Because it's a case all the same. This Tunisian hook set is metal, my friends. Metal. I am so glad that I have it because I am definitely a metal hook stan. 100% to the T. It goes from, what is this, 3 millimeter? 3 millimeter all the way up to 10 millimeter. These are Tunisian crochet hooks. And it came with, in the case, uh, several little bags inside it. Make sure I have everything. It comes with the cords, and I believe these are swivel cords, if I'm not mistaken. So... They will swivel with your project on it instead of giving you a lot of that feedback and tension. So I have the cords there, uh, some cord accessories here, um, and then stoppers to go 
on the end of it uh, of various colors. So I immediately purchased it as soon as TL Yarn Crafts uh, showed it off. <laughs> it, it did take a little while to get here. Uh, not terribly long, though. It was supposed to arrive a week from now, but it came early, so I'm okay with that. Um, they did say... Uh, I'm picking up washi tape from the other thing that's there. Um, they did, you know, ask me to confirm delivery and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, here we go. Uh, if I can find it on AliExpress, I will link it again in the description. However, I will say... When I purchased this set, it was $35 on AliExpress. But like most of these sites, if the popularity of the item goes up, so does the price. So it is no longer $35. But for $35, bucks, I, I think that's a deal and a steal. Uh, in the words of, of Juan. <laughs> Definitely a deal and a steal. Uh, so I'm very glad to have that. I do have a Clover set of... Tunisian crochet hooks. Those are bamboo, recommended by Ola Jo. Um, I love those. I'm going to give these a shot. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I tend to work faster, more efficiently, with less tension and pain in my hands uh, with metal hooks and metal needles. I might switch to these permanently. We will see how it goes. But I did get that. I'm going to put that over here behind me on the uh, roll the dice blanket yarn that you have caked up here. <laughs> I have a whole situation behind me. There's a table. They're in order. Anyway, um, we'll talk about that in that video. Um, the other purchase that I have this week, friends, is friend of the channel, Dee's Creative Hands, mentioned that she was doing a virus shawl out of two uh, Hershner's Mill End cotton cakes. What is, is that what they're called? I've now thrown the invoice away. Um... Millen's self-striping cotton cakes. I think that's what it is. Um, she's, she was holding two of them double and using like a J hook or something to make a virus shawl. And I said, you know what? I keep seeing these cakes everywhere. I've tried to order them once before and I guess they were sold out or something because my order was canceled. I never went back and, and reordered them. Well, I did this week. And they arrived. I don't know what they look like. The package is open. It's right here. The package is open, but I have not looked at the actual cakes themselves. I don't know what I got. I put in two orders of them. So there should be four cakes here, which is an amazing deal for the yarn cakes that they are with the yardage you get. Because I think you get a thousand yards in each cake. Absolutely insane. Um, but we're going to open it and see what I got. We're going to open it and see what I got. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> you you're joking me you're just you're joke you're just mm -mm. i'm gonna hit uh, it's coming out of plastic sorry for the noise i'm so sorry now these are these are completely random you do not know what you're going to get i have two of these two of these does this not just scream me this is this is amazing. It looks just like a a yarn art flowers cake that I have over here. It's right there. I need to clean this room up, y'all. It's it's a mess. Um, I have two of these. I'm super excited about that. <laughs> I am super excited about that. That is very cool. Okay. Um, now I, let's let's look at the second one. I wonder if I got the same color. You never know with these mystery things. I'm going to close my eyes. What do you think? Are they the exact same thing? I'm actually kind of bummed about that. They are the same thing. Hmm. Well, I have four of them now. What am I going to do with that? I don't know. I'm actually really kind of bummed about that. Hmm. Well, four of these. Yep, four of these. We'll see. That kind of just really... Hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, 
I'll order them again because they're a really good deal. Good for stash building, good for giveaways. Maybe one of you will win one of these. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not super, super bummed. I was hoping for something crazy. But that that's fine. That is absolutely fine. I know at least one of them will get used in this house. So. <laughs> All right. Well, there's my purchases for the week. Um, I'm going to get into some happy mail now. One of which I kind of know what it is. And if you follow the YouTube streets, you know, you have, you possibly have seen the video from Mama G where she dyed me some yarn. Well, I believe that that yarn came in. So this might redeem the Hershner's cakes. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to open that in a second. Let me flip it over so we don't see anybody's address inadvertently. Um, but I have another piece that I'm very, very curious about. This was sent to me from uh, Carly. So thank you so much, Carly, for thinking of me and sending me something. She says, and this is with her permission to read this, says, Lucas, I made this for you because we all have a huge list of projects and not enough time to uh, to do them. Yes. Uh, maybe this will take one thing off of your list. P.S. You can read this on video if you like. Well, I did like, so I did. Uh, I did open this out of the package um, so that we didn't have as much of the cream thing. Also, um, I didn't want to show anybody's address, and I could not find my marker that I used to black it out with, so I pulled this out of the package. Thank you for wrapping it inside that package. No spoilers there. Um, I have no idea what this is. So making a little jingling noise. If I do that, can you hear it? Maybe you can't. I don't know. I don't want to make too much noise on the, the microphone. So I'm going to open it and see what this is. I'm super curious. Are you one of the people that like rips the wrapping paper off or you just carefully open it? I, I switch between the two. I don't know if I need to be super precious about this or what. I don't know what this is. I really don't have any clue what this could be. Trying to make too much noise on the microphone. I'm sorry. Is it double, triple wrapped? Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, let's do this the proper way. What is this? Oh, no way! Oh, my gosh! Okay. I know exactly what this is. This is super cool. Okay. Okay. How are you stuck here? Are you supposed to be stuck? Maybe? Okay, okay, hold on. I have to figure that out for a second there. I'm gonna take that off. Uh, am I gonna take that off? Oh, this is beautiful. The stitching is immaculate. Yeah, I'm gonna take that ring off right there so I can show it off in its full glory. I will put it back on in a second. I don't know if that's supposed to be on that ring or not. I don't think it is. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna take it off so I can show it and, and I can give it its full justice. This is so cool. <laughs> Carly, you pay attention. You pay attention, my friend. I am so, so impressed. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that right there for right now because Oh my goodness. In a video in the past, I mentioned making a stitch marker holder. And Carly decided to go a step further and um do one herself. Let me let me let me org let me get that there where it's supposed to be. Uh this one is twisted around as well. I'm gonna fix that. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see this? Do you see do you see this? This is so cool. This is amazing. So there was a YouTube channel that posted a jewelry holder using two dowels and some crochet. And I mentioned in a video that I was going to one day sit down and do one so that I could put all of the stitch markers that my friends from YouTube send me. And Carly decided to go one step further. I probably did all this with the jingling. I listen. Okay, I will fix it. Um, <laughs> this is so cool. This is going to go. I know exactly where this is going to go. I'm going to hang this right here. 
in that corner. You'll see it in every video. Every single video. It'll be right there. Maybe, actually, no. I will probably put it maybe right here uh, on this wall. This wall does not get any sun, and I don't want the yarn to fade. It's so cool. All these little stitch markers, little kitties. That's a moth, I'm going to say. I love the stitch markers. This is amazing. Those are beautiful. I don't know where you got those, but those are beautiful. There's two more. I'll, I'll do a close-up of one of these. Well, if I could do it the right way. See the kitty? Maybe I put it a little bit back here. Kitty! I love it. So cool. So pretty. That's so pretty. Little fringe and little tassel. That is, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Carly. This is so cool. <laughs> this is so cool. So this is, this is a hundred percent, a hundred percent going on one of those corners over there so that I can show off all my stitch markers that my friends from the YouTube street send me. That is amazing. That is amazing. Cause I'll tell you right now. Tell you right now where they're sitting at because they're not really <laughs> they're in a Pyrex bowl. <laughs> they're in a Pyrex bowl. That's not gonna do. Oh, this is so cool. This is so cool. I'm gonna put that back on there. I'm gonna put these these two stitch markers back on here. And that is gonna get hung uh pretty much as soon as I log off from this video because I have a command hook and it's going somewhere on one of these walls. I don't know where. But it's going somewhere. So cool. That is so cool. Okay. There, I put that one back on there. I think that was in the right place. Look at that. I just, I can't even, I, I can't. This is so cool. Okay. <laughs> and your stitching is beautiful. Not that I'm judging your stitching at all, but this is just, this is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. You have to tell me what yarn that is. I have, I have some yarn cakes that look kind of like this. This is this is this is amazing. This is amazing. Are you are we on the same brain brain wavelength? Because the shawl that I showed last week, very similar. Very very similar. This is so cool. I can't get over it. I can't get over it. Can you can you believe it? Can you believe it? I can't believe it. This is so cool. All right. Okay. I'm gonna put this down this down and we're gonna put it like right there maybe so you can kind of just see it right there in the background we're gonna test it out I mean, maybe i'll put it over here in that wall maybe put it up behind me maybe put it, I, i'm gonna find a place to put it. it's gonna be i do have one of those over the door um like closet rack things right there that i hang my scarves off of like this one like this one um I hang off of that in the background. I was wearing this earlier today because it is 12 degrees outside. Um, I have one of those and I just hang my scarves off of that. Maybe I put it there because then you'll see it in there. But then I have to get rid of the scarf. Mm -mm. I'm going to find something. We're going to find something and somewhere to put that. Get that scarf out of the way. We don't need that. That, friends, is a garter stitch scarf stitched in all the garter stitch US 8 needle. 25 stitches for an entire uh karen lava cake that is 13 and a half feet long of scarf i do not know why i did it but i did it was a it was a global personal pan pizza project and we couldn't leave the house what can i say anyway <laughs> gonna take a sip of my tea Okay, so, Mama Jagir's package. I cut a corner off of this package because I wanted to try and get into it without ripping the yarn or cutting the yarn because I know that there's a yarn in here. And now I can't find the corner that I cut. <laughs> You're joking me, right? Okay. All right. Oh, there it is. Found it. I found it. I found it. I feel yarn. It It is a very, very tight package. So I didn't want to, like, go willy-nilly with the scissors. 
I'm learning from friend of the channel, Jackie, uh, Crocheti HD. I'm lear I learned from her fiasco, um, not too long ago. I, I do not, do not do that for packages. I, I can't. I would rather cut my finger than do this. Okay. Okay, I need to put that away from my face, and I'm going to see if there's, like, a card or anything in here. Uh, no. I don't think so. There's a lot of yarn in here. Okay. I'm going to read you off the details of the yarn. It is 50% recycled wool, 50% tensile, 100 grams, 383 yards, 350 meters. It's a four-ply fingering weight. Uh, from Nomad? Nomad Yarn? I, I don't know these things. But I do know that they are hand-dyed. By Mama G. Okay. You can see a little bit of it there. What in the world? Okay. Hand-dyed with love by Mama G. Colorway Soothing Voices. Okay. Okay. I'm going to start blushing in a minute. <laughs> Good lord, how many are in here? Okay. Oh. Oh, did I? Hold on. I know that... Oh, there's a... There's a... There's a little... Okay. I was just checking. Uh, Lucas, welcome to the YouTube neighborhood. Hope you like the colorway soothing voices. Much love, Mama G. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. We're going to show it here. There is some of this orange here. That's a little blown out on camera. It's like a... Like a burnt orange. Like a... Almost like a like a terracotta orange. Not, not quite that brown. With some blues... And some grays right there, hiding in the middle. I think that's where the blue and the, the orange met and made that really cool gradient gray right there. Look at this. Mama G, you did not have to do this. I'm so, I'm so thankful. So thankful. This is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. Can you even... I want to remove, the, I, I want to see the hank without taking that off. So I don't want to take the band off until I know what I'm doing with it. Because there needs to be something special for this. Something soothing, something. That is so cool. There is a video of Mama G dyeing this yarn. So you can see the process and, and, and how it was made. So I did see this before, but... It's totally different in person. This is so cool. <laughs> this is so cool. I have never in my life had yarn dyed for me. Let alone inspired by me. That is... I, I'm speechless. I'm legitimately speechless. This is so pretty. Like this is this is this is so much. <laughs> this is so much. This is so pretty. Oh my. Well now I know why that package was so stuffed. I'm so glad that I cut that corner and like did the Oh my goodness. This is so cool. Thank you, Mama G. <laughs> Oh my, this is, this is just really cool. I, never in my life would I have imagined that even that, uh, I, mm -mm. never in my life would I have imagined. I'll tell you this though, it is way better than this cake. Look at that. <laughs> I'm so excited. Hmm. I'm just thinking of the possible. There's so many things I could do with that. 
Wow, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll put in that note right back in there with it. It's it's going in a Ziploc bag. I, I'm going to find something perfect for that. I have a couple of ideas, but I'm... Mm. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited. That is, I can't get over this blue. This blue is just... Look, look, it, it brings out the blues in my eyes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I had to do that, and I'll tell you why I had to do that, because thumbnails. Um, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> it might actually be the thumbnail. We'll see. We will see. I'm making all the noise. <laughs> okay, my friends. Um, I'm going to get into the Q&A questions. So I hope that you have a drink. I hope that you have your favorite project working and all of the things that you're you're doing. Uh, I wish that I did, but I do not have my project with me. It's the only thing that I wanted to work on today, and I, I, I left the bag at a friend's house. So, anyway... I'm going to get into some Q&A questions. Um, a little while ago, probably two months ago now, I put a post out on my community page asking for Q&A questions because I was going to celebrate a thousand subscribers with a Q&A video. Well, a thousand came very quickly after that, and now here we are at 1,600 plus um, very, very quickly after that. So <laughs> I'm a little bit behind the times. So call this celebrating 1600, celebrating whatever, uh, whatever you want to call it. This is this is my my questions from that Q&A post. Um, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five different categories that I've organized the questions into. And me being me, I have a spreadsheet. There's a whole thing. Um, I've organized the questions in a way that sort of makes sense for a conversation style Q&A video. So we're going to just dive right in. The first section is going to be on my crafting history. So um, the first question I had was, how old were you when you learned to crochet and knit? So this is a really interesting question, I guess, uh, from my own personal story. So uh, I learned to crochet. It was at least the year 1998. I want to say it was 1999. The reason I say that is because I can't remember exactly what year it was, but I know why the catalyst started for me learning how to do this. Uh, I had a friend group. Uh, one of my friends, Anne, you might watch the channel. Hello. <laughs> um, she used to bring her knitting to school. And I just thought it was so cool that she would make all these things for, for our, her, our friend group and her family and and it was cool watching her progress and her projects and how these things were going. Because we, we would meet every day before school. Uh, we would either go to the library or when we all started driving, we would go to Waffle House every morning. Like, there was a whole thing. Um, <laughs> but um, that started my conversation with crochet and knitting specifically. Because I knew that my aunt um, was... A very, I, would, I don't want to say prolific, but she was a very crafty person. She loved to crochet, and I used to see her crochet all the time. So I went to my aunt, and I said, will you teach me? So uh, we sat down, and she taught me how to do a granny square. And this blue uh, boy hook. It's a new boy, not an old one. It's a newish one. Um... Well, I don't know how new it is, but it's new-ish because it doesn't have the quotation marks. This was the first hook that I bought. This was the first hook that I ever used. Um, my first project that I made was a a never-ending granny square blanket. It was out of just random yarn that I picked up either from her stash or from, um, I think it was Walmart at the time. And I sat down and made this giant blanket. Literally just kept going because I didn't know how to stop. <laughs> I knew how to start a project and I knew how to keep or add on new skeins or skeins of yarn because she taught me how to do that. And then I never learned how to tie off and weave in the ends. So my very first project, it just kept going and going and going. This was huge. It was it was big enough to cover a king size bed as my first project. And I think it took me a month. Uh, it took me forever to do with this hook. I was watching some YouTube channels at the time. 
No, I'm sorry. That came before then. Um, the YouTube came in later. But I, I remember taking this hook specifically later on watching uh, The Crochet Geek, uh, Teresa Richardson. Her channel is long gone. Um, but she taught us, she was the first one to do pencil grips on the hooks. And also um, the air tubing for fish tanks. That as well. She said if the pencil grip didn't fit, get the air tubing, cut the, a, a section of the air tubing, cut a slit in it, slide it on the hook, and then slide the pencil grip on top of that. I, I was trying to create ergonomic hooks even then. <laughs> um, but this is my first hook. Very first hook. And I remember that it was 98 or 99 that I learned because um, I was in my freshman year of high school in 1999. Um, and I remember distinctly being in the high school library watching Ann knit before I started to learn how to crochet. Um, so that would put me at what? 14? 15? So... That's when I started learning how to crochet. Knitting came many, many years later. Knitting came during um, uh, the YouTube days. I was in a virtual knitting group, and I was listening to a lot of podcasts where the podcasters themselves were talking about learning how to knit and knitting themselves, doing a lot of projects. Um, and it just piqued my interest because I was like, I know how to crochet. How different can knitting actually be? Well, hmm, it was really different. Um <laughs> <laughs> it was really different. I know that I mentioned in a previous video, I went and bought a Learn to Knit kit from Boy, and it came with these two knitting needles. These are my absolute favorite knitting needles to right, knit scarves with. I knitted this scarf with it. Um, the, uh, the process of learning to knit for me was very fast. Um... And I'm still not sure that I do it correctly because I found a way to make my stitches look the way that everybody else's stitches do. Um, I'm an English style thrower knitter, um, but I do think my tension is very, very tight. I do think that I, I do some things with a lot of extra movements that I shouldn't be doing because I taught myself how to knit. So um, if I ever do a knitting tutorial, um, it's going to be a little... <laughs> Because I don't know if, if I'm doing it right. <laughs> I am considering this year trying to learn how to knit uh, continental style or even Portuguese style where the, the yarn, working yarn is around your neck or on a knitting pin attached to your clothing. Um, because uh, I don't get this problem with crochet. So I can crochet for hours and hours and hours with no issues. I do take breaks and do stretches and things. Uh, but I find with knitting, especially with finer gauge yarns, I get a lot of tension pain in my arms and in my hands, and I don't want to continue that. So I'm considering changing my knitting style as a result. Um, so yes, it was probably 10 or 11 years ago now that I started teaching myself how to knit through YouTube videos, primarily from um, uh, Very Pink Knits, Stacy Perry. Uh, she is fantastic. I'll link her channel in the description. Uh, I probably should write that down so that I don't forget. <laughs> uh, but, um, that in itself is what taught me how to knit. Now, Stacey Perry's got a very unique style of knitting, and I just couldn't figure that out. So I looked at other channels, and there were, I literally just typed in how to knit and learned from those channels. Tons of different options and varieties. Um, I have never taken a knitting lesson in person before, uh, but I do think I would benefit from that. So I'm, I'm looking into that. My problem is there, there is a, a, a quilting shop in my town that has some yarn. They had, they sell like Cascade 220 and, and, and a bunch of different knitting needles and some crochet hooks. Um, they have a beginner knitting class, but is it 10 in the morning in the middle of the week? <laughs> and I work, so I can't, I can't go to that one. Uh, so I'm I'm looking into that as an option. We'll see how it goes. Um, so that covers uh, question one, which is how old were you when you learned to knit? Question two, which is who taught you? Question three, 
which is what made you want to learn? Well, I wanted to learn because I was exposed to other people, like I mentioned for the the crochet, and then the knitting followed suit. I was in the VKN group where it was a bunch of knitters. I was the only crocheter that didn't know how to knit. Um, I was feeling very much FOMO, I'm feeling left out. So I was like, nope, I want to learn. I'm going to learn. That's what I did. So that's 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 that question. <laughs> Um, I will say, um, my crafting life though, has been off and on throughout the years. I was a very, very sick child. Um, I came into this world two months early. I was a premature baby. I had an underdeveloped immune system. I had a lot of health issues. Um, and throughout my childhood and moving further, I did have some, some health issues. I, I was always pretty sick. I have really bad allergies that I seem to be growing further into as opposed to away from, you know, they always just used to tell me that the, um, the allergies will go away as I would get older. No, they're, they're getting worse. Um, <laughs> it's part of why my crafting this week specifically has been a little lower because pollen has started kicking into gear and that's always a bad week for me. But, um, so as, as a result, like my, my mom and my grandmother, all of the women in my life, um, they were always looking for things to give me to do. So I remember being a kid and learning how to cross stitch in some of these little, little tiny circular, um, projects that were just little, little designs or little words or things like that. My grandmother was very big into plastic canvas, uh, when I was a kid. So I learned how to do that. Um, very, very early on, I might've been six or seven. As soon as I learned how to, to do the basic stitches, that was it. Um, I was always around the crafty people. My aunt, like I mentioned, she's a crocheter. She's a quilter. She's cross stitcher. She's, she's done all of those things. Uh, so I was always surrounded by it and fascinated by it. Um, and so as I was growing up and as I was sick and needed stuck in the house and couldn't really do anything, they would hand me something to do. <laughs> I also was a prolific reader, still am, uh, as a result. Um, and I, I loved, you know, escaping to a different world and learning about whatever that particular book said. Uh, my mom used to make a joke all the time where she would say, I couldn't punish you and send you to your room because that's where all your fun stuff is. And I would be quiet the whole time. So she would never know that I'd be, you know, in punishment reading a book. Anyway, that was, <laughs> that was that. Um, the next question is what crafts would you like to try? Well, um, there's a lot that I have done. I have quilted. I have cross stitched. I have uh, plastic canvas. I have um, embroidered a little bit. Um, there's a few things that I would like to try not yarn related. Thinking about trying painting. Um, pottery is something that has always fascinated me, but I've never done it. Um, there's some woodworking things that my... My family has been adjacent to for a very long time that I would like to do scroll saw work. Uh, one of these days I will show you on this wall behind me, there is a scroll sawed picture of uh, Mary and Jesus that my grandfather made. I grabbed it from the house when he died. I was like, nobody's taking that. That's mine. Uh, <laughs> but he also made this giant... Actually, I don't know if he made it or if my uncle made it, but there's a giant um, uh, piece in my grandmother's house that um, will probably stay with the house forever because it's there. But they made it scroll saw work with and, and all of that is, is a lot of fun to do. I've done some scroll saw stuff, but it is very expensive, very space usable. Um, so there's a lot of crafts outside of yarn that I would like to do, because if it is yarn, I've probably done it. The only one I haven't tried is Bargello um, or Macrame. I don't quite know if I would do anything Macrame. Mm, I don't know. We'll see. Um, Bargello is really interesting to me. Really interesting. So 
Maybe. Maybe. So, <laughs> that is the crafting history section. Let's move on to the yarn and tools section. Uh, the first question there is, what is your favorite yarn weight to work with? My absolute favorite is going to be um, fingering, D or fingering DK or a light worsted in, in that range. I absolutely love, 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 love fingering weight yarns because... I live in the South and most of the projects that I make with the heavier weight yarns are things that I can only use for like seven minutes a year. If I make a lighter project with a lighter yarn, um, I'm more likely to use it throughout the year or longer than, you know, that one day a year where it's negative 70 degrees. Um, I absolutely love my fingering weight projects uh, or fingerling weight as our friend of the channel D will say. <laughs> Um, I, I stay in that realm. I'm starting to branch out into the bulkier weight yarns. I'm starting to branch down into the lace weight yarns, um, as part of my, my work here on this channel, trying to challenge myself, gets out, get outside of my comfort zone. Uh, but that's really where I stay is that, that fingering to DK to light worsted. Um, the next question. Uh, what is your favorite yarn? Do you have a different favorite for knitting and crochet? So this is kind of an open-ended question because there's a, it, it could be yarn fiber, it could be yarn weight, it could be yarn brand. You know, there's a lot of ways you can interpret this. I'll try to answer it as best as possible. So uh, for crochet, I do prefer like a a three or a light four, a DK or, or a light worsted. Um, for knitting, I do prefer the finer gauges. Fiber, I'm going to lean more towards acrylic or an acrylic blend of cotton or wool um, than a full 100% wool, simply, again, because wool can be very, very hot to wear. I live in the South, or hot as it is. <laughs> so if I make something, I want the people around me that are going to get it to be able to use it as much as possible. So that usually means a lighter weight and it's going to be like an acrylic or a, co or a cotton blend. I have so much cotton in my stash as a result. It's not even funny. Um, <laughs> so there's that. Uh, favorite hook is the next question. Uh, again, this could be favorite hook brand, favorite hook size. Uh, so my favorite hooks, I keep in a pencil case. I apologize for the noise. My favorite hooks currently right now, as of the making of this video in February of 2024 is going to be the Susan Bates, um, ergonomic soft touch hooks with a little rubber grip at the, at the end of it. Uh, I stay between a size G, which is a four millimeter and six millimeter hook uh so anything between those are my favorites um previously before that my favorite were the the clover soft touch um that have the the flatter thumb grip here um and i i waffled back and forth with the uh clover amore hooks as well i know a ton of you use these hooks i want to like them but if I'm going to use the clover, I might as well use my favorite soft touch. So I, I waffle back and forth with those. I am also using, let me, let me grab it here out of my, my, my working desk here. I'm using the Haya Haya hook for my roll the dice blanket. It's, it's one of these, the Haya Haya Panda there, uh, sent to me by a viewer. These, I want a whole set. <laughs> They're not ergonomic. They don't have anything fancy or special about them, but they are such high quality. The it's like butter. It's it's smooth as butter. It's insane how smooth these hooks are. Um, I absolutely love them, and they're not super expensive, but they can be hard to obtain in the U.S. Um, I I have seen on the internet in a few various different places that have them, but. I, I just haven't gone down that road and bought a full set yet. I want to, but not quite yet. Sorry about that. 
Uh, the next question, how do you store your yarn collection? Well, that is a work in progress. <laughs> um, I would show you, but uh, there's a lot of things around where my yarn is stored that I'm not happy with right now, and I'm working to change that. But changing that also means changing a lot of the things in my living space and my working space at the same time. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to rearrange this room uh, because this is my craft room, this is my work room, this is my office, this is my play area, this is, you know, I I play games in this room. I, there's, there's all kinds of things that happen in this room. Um, so I have to be mindful of what I do in this room to keep those functions available at the same time. Um, and I have to also be mindful of the sunlight that comes into this room, because when those blinds are open behind me, the sun hits this wall right here all day. Dawn to dusk, sun is right there in that, that wall. So if I store room out in the open in this room, yarn in this room, out in the open all day, I cannot have it on this wall because the sunlight will break down the dyes in the yarn. So I have to put it on this wall or the one over here, which you can't see. Um, this wall has the door to it, and over here next to me is like a shelf with my, I have a Keurig in here, my computer stuff is here, um, my Smalexa device, um, <laughs> it's named com computer, um, and it just woke up. Uh, but. I, I don't have a lot of extra space in the room, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to either move the TV out and flip some things around, or I'm going to put in uh, more of the cube storage, because I have cube storage units like what every YouTuber has um, that's storing my yarn currently in this closet next to me here. Now, keep in mind, Outside of cotton yarns and what you have recently sh seen on the channel, I have in total, in total, something around 45 skeins of yarn. That's it. I don't have a lot. Um, maybe a little extra. I haven't quite counted everything in this box that was sent to me by Russ. Um, and I don't count the blanket yarn. So it might be closer to 80. I don't have a lot of yarn. But to, to some of you, 80 skeins is a ton of yarn. I, I get that. I've been in both places, right? It wasn't very long ago that I could not afford a single skein of yarn. Um, so my yarn stash is not impressive. I don't have a yarn scape. I don't have the amount of yarn that would make that look good. And if I put it on camera right now and showed you, it would be mostly empty squares and empty shelves. And it just wouldn't look all that great. So until I figure out what that's going to look like, what that's going to be, beef up my stash a little bit. That's what we have. So it is currently in the closet. Everything else is in the closet as well. So <laughs> it's not exactly the prettiest situation, but I do store it in those, those, those cube shelf units. And I have some just um, plastic storage bins with the lids that I put the extra into. Also my cotton yarn uh, is in those bins as well. It's not fancy. It really isn't. <clears throat> uh, and the next question is, how do you keep your hooks and needles organized? Let me tell you about my shame. <laughs> Can't believe I'm going to show you guys this. Um, okay. Overflow hooks are in a cup. That's all I can say about that. Uh, my favorite most used hooks are in a pencil case just like this. Also in this pencil case, I have a needle gauge. I have some scissors. I have some needles. I have a flash drive that has a lot of patterns on it. Um, I also crocheted a little um, piece of fabric in there to dampen the sound a little bit because I carry this everywhere I go. This This comes with me everywhere I go. I probably should not do that because that, uh, I'm thinking of a horror story now where if I lost this. Anyway, so that is that. 
Now, I'm going to come clean. Please don't judge me. <laughs> this is embarrassing. This is totally embarrassing. The rest of my hooks are just, and needles are just in a in a bin. That's my wallet. My keys with my Rosebud Motel keychain. It says you get murdered first. Yeah, uh, but they're just in here. They're just in a nothing fancy. They're not organized. They're not. Put that back before I drop it. They're not anything. It's embarrassing. I have absolutely no organization for any of it. Don't. Just all willy nilly in that bin. <laughs> so, anyway, all right, we're gonna move on because I'm I'm. Anyway, uh, next up is the projects section of question. The question is related to projects or specific things. So, uh, first up, Journey of a Crafty Hodophile asks, how did your mom like her gifts? Well, my mom got quite a few Christmas gifts this year that were handmade, um, and she absolutely loves them. <laughs> uh, she does not watch this channel. I have specifically told her that I will not tell her the name of this channel if she comes across it organically so be it. But I also tell her that I want to make her things and to do so, I'm going to show it off on the channel. She's going to be spoiled for future gifts. So it's up to her discretion if she chooses to watch this channel. But yes, the, um, the lab can that I made her with the border, um, and the, uh, midnight windows shawl triangle scarf situation that I made the pumpkin pie shawl, as you will, um, she absolutely loves that. <laughs> and there's a couple of other items that I've given her that I've made from this channel um, that she absolutely just uses all the time. We are in a pretty drafty house. And um, on days where the winds are high, like today, um, part of the reason why this video is so late is because the power has gone on and off, on and off like 18 times a day because the winds are very high. Um, anyway. Uh, she absolutely loves them. Um, that was not always the case with the made, the handmade stuff that I made over the years because um, I have never been the greatest at making garments. We're, we're, we're branching into new things and doing more things. So we're learning. Um, <laughs> I remember making her a hat, which was just a, a very basic single crochet hat. And it was like... The fabric was so tight and it was, it, it was awful. And she looked at me and she was like, I'm not wearing that. I'm, I'm never going to wear that. <laughs> we ended up donating it. Um, I, I've never been the greatest at making wearable garments for adults. Now children is a whole different story. Um, excuse me. So that is where that is. She absolutely loved her gifts that she got and she will continue to do so throughout the year because I did. Do a little bit of yarn dyeing, which or yarn buying. I'm not dyeing yarn. Don't get excited. Um, I did a bit of yarn buying last weekend for future projects for this channel um, because I wanted very specific colors that I didn't have yet. You'll see that maybe in next week's video. Um, but yes, she absolutely loved them. <laughs> Uh, the next question, uh, from Journey of a Crafty Hodophile was, what was your least favorite item to make? Um, I have to take a breath for that because the thought of it was, anyway, I had a friend, um, who gave birth to a little girl. Uh, who did not stay with us for very long. I made the funeral outfit that she she wore. I hated every minute of it. Hated every minute of it. But when somebody asks you to do something like that, you do it. And I did. And I was honored to do it. But I hated every minute of it. 100%. So, <clears throat> I ne I didn't take a single picture of it. I just, I did not want 
any of that memory. Um, anyway, so to follow up with that, what was your favorite item to make? <laughs> well, um, many, many years ago, a friend of mine and I were joking about how cool it would be if I made a pair of fuzzy dice for his car. And I did. I made it out of some bright neon red heart super saver with a gray, like a dark charcoal gray for the the tie between them and to sew the squares together. I stuffed them with plastic shopping bags because I wanted it to be firm, but I, I knew that it wouldn't be something that somebody would play with a lot. I wanted it to be firm and maintain that shape, so I used plastic shopping bags that I shredded so I could stuff it in there and get that square um, shape. I thought of it after the fact, but I should have used plastic canvas to, to, to get it perfectly square, but it wasn't. Uh, that was my absolutely favorite thing to do uh, that I've ever done, <laughs> just because of the reaction that it got when it, when it was opened. Um, yeah. That was that was my favorite thing to do. I will do a an instructional video on how I put those together because I've now made several since then. If anybody would like me to, just let me know in the comments. They're not difficult to do. They're just super fun. Uh, <laughs> dream item to make is the next question. A dream item for me to make would be a... And this might happen this year. A wearable that I am comfortable in wearing either outside of this house or just in general. Something for my size. I'm a fluffier person. Um, I'm not the largest person in the world. But for me specifically, this is the largest I've ever been. And there's a lot of reasons why I have, have gotten to this point. Uh, maybe one day I will share the whole story with you. But... Anyway, I struggle to find clothing that makes sense for me to wear in stores anyway because my proportions are very off. I have a long torso and shorter legs, and I'm a larger person. So I either have to buy shirts that are two or three sizes too big to get them to be long enough, which means then I'm wearing a shirt that just looks awful on me, or I'm, you know downsizing a little bit and wearing undershirts or wearing hoodies or coats or something to cover it because it's not going to be long enough. Anyway, that's that's probably way too much information there, but I would love to make something for me specifically that I am comfortable wearing um, for my body shape and size. That has never happened before. I've never made like a shirt or a sweater or a hoodie or a pair of pants or any of those things. I've never made any of those. Um, Trousers, for those of you in the UK or elsewhere, I don't mean underwear, <laughs> but um, I forget I have to be mindful of these things sometimes. Um, so I, um, I've never made one of those, and I think I would feel incredibly accomplished if I actually made something like that, uh, but I'm very nervous to try it. Uh, most of my crafting history has been home goods, pillows, coasters, washcloths, dishcloths, usable household items, or amigurumi. And I haven't focused on those on this channel specifically because I've done them so many times. You know, I I, I get toy orders all the time from um, EMT friends of mine that want little toys that they can keep in the ambulance in case of emergency. You know, I, I do all kinds of things, right? Um... But I've never made something for me like that, like a wearable garment, and I think it's time that I do that. I do. And I, I know that I've talked about that on the, on the channel. That is that is like a dream item for me. If and when I complete that, it's going to be a game changer for me. <laughs> Accessories, I do all day. But actual fitted to me garments, no. Uh, not yet. And that's that's one of my, my dream items to make. Um... The next question is, have you created any patterns? I don't think that I would call them patterns. I don't call myself a designer. But I have made things uh, like the Lucas's favorite dishcloth. And it really isn't just, a, I, I wouldn't call that a pattern. I wouldn't call it, say that I designed that. Uh, it's a stitch that I put 
in a specific size. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I get a little iffy when it comes to that because I know designing actual things takes time and effort and energy. I put very little energy into that. Um, but yet it's something that I do and make and use all the time. Um, as far as an actual item, I've never done that before. Never done that before. Um, there are a couple of things that I do and make that I could turn into patterns. I've just never done that. Um, the closest thing I have would be that dishcloth. But it, if you're a crafter and you've been doing this long enough, I've now been doing this for 25 years. <laughs> um, there are things that you will make and you will be, have a basic recipe that you follow. Um, like my little garter stitch scarves over there. I know exactly how many stitches I like for each scarf that I have to, for yarn type and needle size, etc. I have that memorized and I know that because that works that's what works for me and my tension and my personal style and what I look for in an item is that a project that I designed I don't know would you call that a designer or a pattern I don't know I don't think so excuse me I have the hiccups today uh but for something that um that you would call you would go like so like Ravelry and say I want to find a pattern for xyz I've never done that not formally Thinking about it, though, thinking about it, though, <laughs> um, the next question comes from Fiber Floozy Crafts. What would you say is the most involved thing you have ever made? Um, that's a tough one because there's a couple of things that could fit into this. So before the pandemic, I would make a gift set for preemies. I would do a crib blanket, I would do diaper covers, I would do booties, I would do mitts, and I would do a hat for um, preemies. And I would do a full set of them, and they would be coordinated in all of the things and put them together, um, wash them appropriately, seal them in containers, usually Ziploc bags, take them down to the hospitals, etc. They would usually wash them again anyway, but I, will, I want to be absolutely double sure if we're going to make something and deliver that to a hospital that they can use it. So I would do that, and I would do probably 30 or 40 sets of those a year. Um, at one point, I did like 10 or 12 in a month, really just depending on on how much time I could, get, I could give to it. Um... I used to do that all the time. I used to do it all the time. And I would be able to donate it to hospitals. Well, when the pandemic hit, they no longer take donations, at least in the area that I'm in. So I've stopped doing that. Um, but those were very involved. <laughs> very involved. Uh, but is it the most involved thing? I, I don't know. I was part of a yarn bombing um, installation at one point where we went into the town that it was in and beforehand we measured things like tree trunks and and telephone poles and benches we measured a bunch of things and went went back home and made squares and rectangles and all kinds of things that we could stitch together quickly um to then go to this street because we got permission to do it as part of an art installation um we all showed up one day with all of our stuff and just blanketed that street with yarn. <laughs> that was the most organization-wise that I've had to be involved in something. It wasn't a difficult stitch to do, but it was something that took a lot of effort and energy and time to put together um, to make it happen. There were about 20 of us that got together and did that. It was really cool. I would love to do something like that again, but I don't know if it'll ever happen again. Um... At least not right now. <laughs> um, last in the project section is a question that is uh, favorite crochet and knit stitch. Um, so my favorite crochet stitch is one that you don't see often. It is, and it depends on who you ask what you might call it, but is a wide half double crochet. Because if you put it in subsequent rows, it creates a staggered texture that looks really cool. Um, you should look it up. Uh, it might have a different name, 
but it's the 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 wide half double uh and then the knit stitch that is my favorite um i really 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 like stockinette stockinette is where you um knit stitch on one row or on like the front side and on the back side you purl so it creates those little v's and it let you see in knitted fabric i'm trying to see if i have anything that might be usable to demonstrate it I, kind of okay i will show you it, they look kind of like these v's here just in the fabric um that's my favorite to do because if you do it in the round it's mindless and it looks great um, so not very complicated. I don't like very complicated things um, as my quote-unquote favorites. I will do them depending on the pattern, but it's not what I'm drawn to. Those are not my favorites, so, but those two are. Uh, quick break. <laughs> quick, quick drink break. All right. So the next up is YouTube. And the question comes from... Journey of a Crafty Hodophile. Uh, the question is, what was your last or was your last YouTube channel about crochet? So I have had a handful of YouTube channels over the years. Um I my very first channel on YouTube was for crafting. It was called the Brochet Podcast. Bro as in boy, bro, bruh, whatever you want to call it. Brochet. Um and that I started when I was part of that virtual knit group, uh, where I would talk about knitting and crochet projects. I think even in that channel, at one point, I showed off the fuzzy dice that I made <laughs> for my friend, the first ones that I made. Um, I actually ended up having to walk away from that channel after a while because, and this is not anything against the YouTube community as a whole, but... I got the attention of some very sketchy people, uh, which happens sometimes in YouTube. Uh, and those people kept giving me a lot of really negative feedback. And at the time when I was making the channel and the situations in my life that were happening, that kind of feedback really sent me completely downhill. So I had to walk away from it for my own health. Um, and I'm kicking myself for this now, but I did take those videos completely down. I deleted them. They're gone completely. I wanted to bring them back for this channel, like re-upload them and say, you know, from the archive, this is Lucas from 10 years ago. I just couldn't, couldn't find them. They're, they're gone completely. And I'm very sad about that. So that was my first channel. I do have a second channel that is kind of dormant right now. I might pick it back up again. I do have a video gaming channel where I focus primarily on quote unquote cozy games. So Minecraft, Stardew Valley, um, there's, a, there's a number of different games, not so much the violent types of games, even though I have played them on that channel. Um, and I, I do sometimes play them in my own personal time. Uh, but I I have that channel under a different name. It is called Cardike Gaming. Cardike is my gaming name, my gaming um, persona, so to speak. Cardike is taken from the name of a river that is north of me in Georgia, the Cardike River. Um, I just thought it was a cool name, so I took it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I, I do have that channel. Not many people watch it. I think it's only got like 300 subscribers. But there's a there's probably 10 years of Minecraft videos on there. It had a different name at one point. Um, but I've, I changed it to Cardike Game or Cardike Gaming. I can't even remember. That's how old or how long ago it was since I uploaded a video there. I can't remember exactly what the name of it is. I'll link in the description. Um, so that's that. My, my very first channel was about crafting, but I, I had to walk away from it. The other channel that I have is about gaming and not crafting at all. <laughs> um, so next up, we go into the personal section, the, the, ooh, scary section, uh, for a lot of people, but you were all very respectful with your questions and I appreciate that. So, 
Uh, the first question, may we see your cat? Well, I'll put a picture of my cat here. Uh, Sherlock is very much an independent cat. She does not like to um, be told or asked what to do. She comes to you when she is ready to grace you with her presence and nothing more and nothing less. Uh, she sometimes will come and sit here on the bed behind me while I work all day, soaking up the sun, because remember, the sun comes in that window all day. Um, <laughs> but she did have a brother. His name was Watson. Uh, we lost him last year. Um, there's a long journey with cats in this house, um, but she might be the last one. We'll see. Uh, Toby, my dog, might also be the last one. I don't know. Um, we just got, we, we have too many other things happening right now to care for elderly animals. And we uh, have Toby, who is, he's getting up there. And Sherlock is not too far behind. So um, I don't know if we will have it in us to do another kitten or another puppy. Um, once they uh, have uh, given their time. But we'll see. I, I never want to say never for that, but they might be. Uh, but yeah, that is my Sherlock, and I'll put a picture of Toby here as well. <laughs> uh, next up is, how do you find the time to crochet when you're doing 14-hour shifts? I find it hard. I'm a truck driver and work 14-hour shifts. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't, my friend. Um the worst part about it for me is that I've now added YouTube to the mix. And if you're not a content creator, you might not understand this, but there is a pressure to create and to do more and to make all the things as soon as you start making YouTube videos. Um, especially if you gain a lot of attention and a lot of interactivity with the people that view your videos. You want to produce more because you want to make more videos. And the stress for that specifically uh, sometimes takes a little bit of the joy away from it. I'm not saying that's a necessarily a bad thing, but it does sometimes feel like a chore sometimes. And when you add in the fact that I'm working sometimes 12, 14, 16 hour days, depending on the needs of what's going on at the time, I don't, I don't, I will put the hooks down. I will put the needles down and walk away from it for a few days. So there are some times on this channel where you will see like this week, not a lot of things happened. I made my squares, my blanket squares, which are right here. Uh, but that's it. I didn't make anything else. There was no time for this week. Um, next week, I have Friday that I've taken off of work. And I have the following Monday that I've taken off of work. So I might spend those two days completely diving into yarn somewhere. Um, but yeah, so sometimes you just don't have the time. It just doesn't exist. Um and depending on the other things that are happening in this house, I have even less time <laughs> sometimes. So there's that. Uh, sometimes you just don't, and it's okay to walk away. Don't stretch yourself out. These are hobbies. These are meant to be fun. These are meant to be enjoyable. And if you're not enjoying it that day, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, the next question is, do you have any other hobbies? What do you like to do while you're crocheting or knitting? Well, I do have other hobbies. Um, I live in a very um, rural area, so I like to go on day trips to other places. Um, one of my favorite places to drive up and visit would be the Skyway in Tennessee. Um, I like to go people watch somewhere. Um, there is a botanical garden near me um, that is very near me, actually. <laughs> uh, so near that I buy a yearly pass every year. Um, there's a botanical garden I like to go to. I just go and people watch, you know, just hang out for the day. Um, I like to watch pretty much any kind of TV show you can think of. I'm on a, on an, like an anime kick right now because of some of the things that are going on, um, in my friend group, but, um, <clears throat> I love to watch TV. I love to watch movies. Movies are really where it's at for me though. Um, as far as what I like to do when I'm knitting or crocheting, <clears throat> one of my things that I'd love to do right now specifically is instead of putting on a movie that I've watched 300 times and having something on in the background, I'll go on YouTube and I'll search for um, 
reaction videos to somebody watching that same movie. So say I want to watch a classic like Steel Magnolias or Fried Green Tomatoes or The Fifth Element. <laughs> My tastes are all over the place. Uh, say I want to watch one of those. Well, instead of watching the movie myself, I'll put on a reaction video of somebody on YouTube watching that movie and recording the reaction to it. So it's like I'm having almost like a conversation with that person watching the movie instead of doing it myself. I will do that. I, do, I was actually just watching somebody watch um, Silent Hill 1 and Silent Hill Revelation uh, earlier today while finishing my squares. Um, no spoilers. I almost just showed you. No spoilers. Um, <laughs> I was finishing the borders on my squares. Um and I was watching that today while, while I was going through the day. And it was it was an enjoyable time. It was really fun. Uh, if you've never seen a reaction video before, I highly, 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 highly suggest that you go and find somebody watching your favorite movie. Because it changes the experience of the movie for you. Instead of you watching the movie or even in person watching it with somebody that you know, um, there's a really fun aspect to going... And watching somebody you've never met before watch the movie that you love and see if their take from it and what they react to is the same thing that you do. It's a lot of fun. And you grow to appreciate some of the things in the movies that you love that you've never seen before from that aspect or from that angle. You really do grow to appreciate it so much more than you ever really did before. Um, but that's my favorite thing to do right now. Otherwise, it's I, I mostly listen to music or audiobooks. <laughs> if I'm watching a TV show, I find it really difficult to pay attention to some of the details if I'm doing something else with my hands. So if I watch a TV show, it's going to be something I've seen a thousand times before. But if I want to sit down and stop and watch something for the first time, I'm doing nothing but watching that. Um, so that's what I do. And that came from Carly. Um Last but not least, <laughs> last but not least, are you from Georgia? I don't detect a Southern accent. Well, I get comments on that all the time. Yes, I am from Georgia, born and raised. Uh, I have lived here most of my life, actually. <laughs> so the reason you don't hear a lot of an accent, um, and you hear my mom very thick accent. You hear a lot of my friends, very thick accent. The reason you don't hear a lot of accent out of me specifically is because I went through decades of stage training, voice training, vocal lessons, um, learning how to project my voice, learning how to um, be as... What's the word I'm looking for? Um be as generic as possible when it comes to presenting myself in front of other people because there is a perceived notion of either intelligence or belief or a lot of different other things when you have a specific accent especially from the region that i'm from um and to be able to like if i were to take an act on stage I have to, unless the character calls for it, I have to mask my accent a little bit because it might not fit for the character. It might not fit for what I'm doing. If I'm singing on the stage, I, I was a classically trained singer. Um, that accent doesn't exist <laughs> in classical music, in classical orchestral and choral music. That accent doesn't exist. Uh, so you have to hide it a little bit. Um, now, when I when I sing and when I talk and when I get really tired and, and all of these things, the accent does come out. <laughs> it it does come out, but I spent so many so many of my formative years, um, starting at third grade. It was a very long time ago, um, learning how to hide it and not be this stereotypical Southern box. And if you're from this area and you ever took an acting lesson, or if you ever took a voice lesson, if you ever took a, a, a public speaking lesson, you were told that exact same thing from this, this area. You have to flatten the accent, become as region agnostic as possible, because there is a perceived notion of something the audience will have 
from their stereotypes that will lessen their experience of your performance. Now, it's not all the, all the time. It's not across the board, but that's just what I, I grew up with. And so my accent has changed as a result. I speak like this all the time. <laughs> this is me all the time now. Um, but when I was younger, I had a much thicker accent. Uh, I have family members that have very, very thick accents. Um, I just don't. And you'll find... Um, if you are in like the metro city areas like Atlanta, um, Augusta, Columbus, Savannah, the, the larger metropolitan areas in Georgia, you're not going to have as much of an accent because it's more of a melting pot. If you go outside of that into the suburbs, um, in the more rural areas, you will have a much more thicker accent than what you do inside the cities. I did grow up in a city, but I came up here to the mountains every weekend. My grandparents live, literally can see their house from that window. Um, they, uh, they were up here my entire life. So I was always around the different cultures and the different groups of people. Um, it really just depends on who I'm speaking to, how thick it comes out, but it does, it does come out sometimes. <laughs> it really does. Um, but this voice that you're hearing, I wish that it was my natural voice. I wish that it was something that I didn't have to grow into or learn how to speak. Because uh, imagine if that was natural. <laughs> imagine if that was natural. It's I'm not hiding anything. Like, this is how I speak in, in general. Um, but I do know that it is not the voice that I grew up with. It has changed. It has evolved. It has morphed into what it is now over the years. Um, and there's there's certain things that I personally can't do as a result of my training. Like I, if I go to like an amusement park and I'm riding a roller coaster, I cannot physically scream. Can't do it. I cannot yell very loud. I cannot scream. I'm not going to speak very loud for the most part because I have that training in me you will break your voice. You will injure your vocal cords. You tone it down. <laughs> so a lot of this is, is all of that coming into one. And it's just second nature to me now. So that is the story of my voice and my accent and why I don't really have a Southern accent. Sometimes it comes out. Maybe, maybe one day we will sit on a porch, listen to tea and I'll let it out. Maybe. <laughs> but until then, this is what you get. Um, well, I think I'm going to wrap it up there, my friends. It has been an hour and a half. Oh, my goodness. If you have watched this entire thing, listen, I... Thank you. Uh, you do not have to watch this. <laughs> and the, the YouTube uh, analytics will tell me that people don't watch this long into a video, but I'm still going to put it out there because some of you do. Some of you do. And those that you do, I feel it right there, uh, right there in my heart. So thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry that it's not a lot of yarn stuff, but uh, we do have some weeks like that. Um, looking forward to next week. Looking forward to Wednesday for the update on the Roll the Dice video. Uh, I have recorded and will be releasing also the January uh, New Year New, sk new Skill uh cal video uh that will be coming out i think it's on thursday i think i scheduled it for thursday um so that is definitely coming out this week as well uh there is a prize winner in there i know who it is you don't <laughs> uh so congratulations to you whoever you are um i actually made a powerpoint presentation for that yes i'm one of those people uh <laughs> But yes, thank you so much, my friends. Thank you for spending time with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, looking forward to next week. And until next time, have a good one. We are not going to talk about how my hair today is looking like Alfalfa's cousin, Bean Sprout. Mm -mm.